This is a brief tutorial explaining how to set your black point and white point preferences within Photoshop so that every time that you do sample a white or a black or a mid gray you are within certain values and the purpose of this is so that you don't have any clipping in the white or any clipping on the black end. So to be able to do that we need to define what our sample points should be. So to begin with that, um, you will need to have an image open in Photoshop. For the sake of convenience, what I have done is um, I have photographed a X-Rite color checker chart just so that it's easier to explain and work from there. Let's begin with the process for just a moment. If we were to sample the white, the black, and a mid gray if we were to look at what values there are within the blacks and the whites and the grays so let's say number one is currently at 217 number two which is a black which is at 40 and number three which is a mid gray is at 133 in an ideal world we want the black to be around the 240 mark and the oh, sorry I apologize the white should or should be around the 240 mark RGB and the black at about 10 RGB and the mid gray you can choose at 128 or whatever falls in between your high and your low preferences in terms of the white and the blacks. To be able to do that the first thing that we need to do is go into our adjustment panel and within the adjustment panel you can choose either the levels option or the curves option. Personally I kind of lean very strongly towards the curves so I'm gonna stick with the curves so when I click on it you notice that there are three sampler tools here the white point sampler the mid gray sampler and the black sampler so if we were to take any one of these and double click on let's say beginning with the white notice it says sample an image to set white point so we double click in here and the default value that Photoshop has is that the whites are at 255. Let's say I'm going to change it to 240, all three values, so that I have consistency of white because equal numbers in the red, green and blue will imply that you have a neutral color and white is fundamentally our reference point for any other color. So once I've input the value here, I hit OK. And Photoshop then asks me, do I wish to save the new target colors as defaults? And I'm going to say yes. Then next step is I'm going to do the black point as well. And notice the default values in Photoshop are at 0, 0, 0. So I'm going to apply 10, 10, and 10 in each one of these red, green, and blue values. And I hit OK. And I say yes. The mid value by default is at 128, which is somewhere in the middle of it. So I'm going to leave it alone. Now that I've got this done, um, I can close this panel and not be worried about it. And now notice that there are two samples in here. One is what I sampled at and one will be the applied sample. So if I were to go into my layers palette, notice that it has created a new layer. I select this particular layer and I take my double click on it so that my adjustment layer comes open and I'll take my white sampler and I'll bring and click it in the white space notice the shift in the whites then next step I go into my blacks and I can click a sample in my blacks and suddenly the image is beginning to pop a lot more and now if you were to look at the info palette very interestingly, number one value, which was a white at 240 that I've set, has come to 237, 237, 237. And by the same token, my black value from 40 has come to 10, 10, 10. So effectively, what I have done is, without guessing or without depending on the nature of my monitor, whether my monitor is calibrated or not, I have successfully corrected for my whites and my blacks. And in general, when you have your whites, blacks, and neutral values correctly done, 
every other color should fall into place at which point in time then it's a purely personal preference as to what colors you may wish to tweak at that point in time and once you're done you're done and once you've set these values for black and white they're going to stay within Photoshop until such time that you either uninstall and reinstall or something of that nature and that's about it the next question is how does all this apply in the real world applications within Photoshop so to demonstrate that here is an image that I had photographed um, and if you'll notice that the image is pretty flat looking so the exposure is a little off and the contrast is a little wacky and to be able to better understand what my image is doing I've opened up my histogram palette as well to be able to see and you'll notice that in the first window over here where my cursor is uh, there's a huge amount of clipping on the black so now I wish to bring the contrast with an intelligent range and not really damage my colors either so this is where we're going to apply the preferences that we have set in Photoshop so very briefly um, I'm looking at okay so where what is supposed to be my brightest area and what is supposed to be my darkest area that I would like to have in my photograph and these are purely personal choices Fortunately, in this case for me, um, the charming young lady is wearing an outfit which has a white and a black as well. So if you notice, um, I have got uh, two samples here, one in the black and one in the white. Now, if you notice, I've also got the info palette open. So my black sample, which is the number one sample, is giving me a readout of red green and blue at zero values which means that if I were to go ahead and print this image all this will be completely choked with zero information in there which is not what I'm looking for by the same token if I look at the number two value oh dear me it's only at 196 196 206 so then my whites potentially could be slightly off I could choose any other white so I could drag it over here and see where my whites are and basically it's a choice that you need to make to define on your own preferences based on your own preferences as to what should be the brightest area in the image with intelligent levels of detail so let's say I've got these three samples for a moment and I'll take a fourth sampler here because this seems like a very dead space just underneath her hair here just to understand where my readings are so when I take a reading in here because she has a bit of a reddish tone to her hair so my value over here is 400 do recognize one thing that when you're choosing a black and white if you pick on a black and white which already is really supposed to have a coloration to it that will become your reference point for that neutral value and let me demonstrate that very quickly don't do this I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes so for the sake of argument what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decide that hey this is where I want my white highlight to be just on her forehead and see what happens so I go into my curves I pick on my white sampler and I click in here yikes sure the forehead has become white but all the colors have skewed themselves so bad idea so I don't want to do that so let's say what if I were to pick on this white which is on her dress so I click in here hmm so that comes up a little bit and what if I take a black in here and sample that so you notice the shift in the curve over here and also if I were to refresh my histogram you will notice that there's a very tiny bit of clipping in the red channel so the red channel color could be slightly slightly clipped but overall what you will notice is that my values have come within the tolerance levels and not a whole lot of information is getting clipped and to be able to share this information more intelligently I'm going to switch on and off my corrective curves layer so very little information in the highlights and I brought up the highlights here the blacks were clipping away and 
when I correct it, the blacks are now not really clipping away, if you notice in here. And we can look at the luminosity curve as well and refresh it. And you will notice that this area is not clipping from level 0 to about level 7, 8. And once again, in the 255 range, there's very little bits of information which is really out of range. And the impact is quite visually you can look at the image and more importantly looking at the histogram and the amount of information you're carrying through. That's one very simple application. I mean obviously there are more complex levels of applying this and then working on the image from this point on but for now this is how simple it can really be. Hope it makes sense to you.